What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Good evening, everybody. I'm Love Coach Scott Katamas, and it is the Saturday night edition of The Awakening World. And tonight, it's all about tools for how to raise our frequency, to raise our vibration. And I have the perfect co-host for that, because whenever she opens her mouth and sings, our vibration comes higher and higher. And really, just when she walks into a room, um, and of course, I'm talking about our beloved Kristen Hoffman. Um, welcome back, Kristen. It's so good to have you with us. Oh, Scott, it's so great to be back. And I'm really excited about our topic tonight and to really cultivating these tools together so that we can all start raising our frequency and, and really activating our our choice to raise our frequency in our own lives. Um, I think when we have some good tools at our fingertips, we really can activate that choice on a daily basis. And uh, here we are. We've got some great guides to lead us on the way. We do. We do. Do you want to introduce uh, a couple of your friends? Well, oh, I would say everyone here tonight is a beloved soul. Um, we're going to be hearing from Nikita Gearing just such a dear sister in my life who has helped me to form tools to raise my frequency. And I'm, I, I'm super excited for her to share her wisdom tonight. And um, we'll be both hearing some meditation and also about what she's working on in her world of I am mantra. And then we have Mahalia Mermaid. <laughs> Mahalia Mermaid is such an incredible being, such a dear sister. She is literally activating our brain, our heart connection, our spirit soul connection through sound, through wisdom from whales and dolphins and the Lyrian council. And she, I, I have literally witnessed Mahalia lift audiences, their frequency as a whole, people who were kind of like not wanting to get out of their seats, suddenly bursting and calling like whales. You are in for a treat. Mahalia is such a gift. And um, thank you, sister. <laughs> we're gonna ha we're gonna hear from beloved Keishi Chai, who Keishi and I have been weaving together for years. I am one of her, I hope I'm, I, I would say I'm one of Casey's biggest fans. I love her work, whether she's speaking or dancing or leading groups through processes to use movement to discover the, their connection to their bodies and their hearts. Casey is a true guide who reconnect, helps us reconnect to ourselves and to nature. And I think especially tonight, we're going to hear a lot about um, how she's doing work these days to really connect us to nature. And Scott, I'll let you take over from here. Well, and I want to say I'm a pretty big fan of Casey too. <laughs> um, 
you know, I, I, of course, saw her several times on Awakening World, and then I got to see her do an amazing dance presentation in Los Angeles. So uh, we are big fans of Keishi. And I get to introduce uh, two of my dearest friends in the world who also help people all over with Raising Vibration. This is Heather and Donnie. Donnie and I have been friends and colleagues for 35 years. Um, we've done everything from creating, working on a movie together to creating videos together. And Heather is an extraordinary shamanic goddess wisdom keeper. And they um, take people on journeys to Egypt and have a beautiful retreat site in Maui. And really their lives are dedicated to helping people raise the frequency. So aloha and welcome Donnie and Heather. Um, and really tonight is all about raising our frequency. And before we start, I want to ask you quickly, Kirsten, what's one tip, one tool, one practice that you'd like to share of how if things are tough, are you a little off center? How do you raise yes. your frequency? Well, I have to say, I just reactivated one of my tools recently, which for me personally is a game changer. And I'll just share for a moment. I, um, I have a morning practice. I highly recommend having a morning practice. Mine is at least 15 minutes med of meditation, 15 minutes of movement in the morning. And my rule for the past years, bunch of years, has been that I'm not allowed to turn my phone on or do anything on my phone until after this practice is completed. Uh -huh. So if I make a tea and I, until I have done these two things, I'm not allowed to look at that phone. So I had done that for years and my morning practice was really thriving. And then, you know, you have one of those days every once in a while where you think, I just have to text this person. It's a timely thing. And I cheated one or two days um, somewhere back in the fall. And then I got into a bad habit of letting go. And I started saying, oh, well, after I'm done with the meditation, then I can get on my phone. And I did that for a few months. So I would meditate and then I'd go right and get on my phone. And in January, I felt really low in my being. And I started to take an inventory of my life. And I said, what if I changed? What if I changed? And right away I knew Okay, I'm going on my phone. So I just switched back to this no phone rule until after I've moved and tuned in. And I have to say within two weeks, within even a week, my whole energy started to clear, raise my frequency. I felt a lot more positive. By the time I have moved my body, then I'm not thinking about my phone. Then I'm thinking about, oh, let's make a nurturing meal. And just that little shift changed so much. So I just encourage you to try that out because so many of us, I think are in the pattern of waking up and we just pick that phone right up and we're in the bed and doing our thing. And um, what would it be like to actually work on raising your frequency first? That is a brilliant suggestion, especially for me, given who I am and how I tend to be. So um, I'm going to read a couple comments from that have already come in from our chat box and always everybody Fire away on the chat box. We always love to hear what you have to say. Um, Dr. Laura writes, I love, oh, she started off actually with, Kristen can open her mouth and boom shoots off the planet. Um, and then we hear, I love whomever Kristen loves. She has a good heart for beautiful people. And you know, Dr. Laura, that's a perfect lead in to um, our next or first guest, which is Nikita. And you know, Kristen, I'm actually trying to remember to do something that Nikita taught me, which is to also pat your body in the morning. She had put that out in one of her I Am Mantra presentations, like start the day by patting your body and loving your body. And I want you to know, Nikita, I try to remember to do that every morning. So thank you. And yes, Kristen has great taste in people. And I've got pretty good taste in people too. And we both love and adore this woman, but I'm going to let Kristen do the full introduction. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. We do love and adore you, Nikita. <laughs> and I know that you have touched my heart, my life, and mm -hmm. so many other souls. And tonight I am so excited for this audience to really receive um, your special gifts. I feel like as I experience you, um, one of the most beautiful parts of your frequency raising or is that you just can can ground in in a way that is so calming 
Mm. When I'm in your presence, I feel like I can just ground into my being, be Mm. here, and that I can be okay with the fullness of who I am. Mm. I feel that in your presence, there's zero judgment. And I feel that that is one of the best tools we can we can use to raise our frequency is just accepting ourselves now. Mm. And so I will turn this over to you. I know you're going to guide us into a practice, but I just wanted to honor mm. honor that experience of you that you just love beings the way they are now and then encourage so lovingly into the higher resonance. Mm. Thank you, sister. I love you. Yeah. And before I begin the meditation, I just want to say the high frequency that we're talking about, cultivating high frequencies, that is who we already are. That is already who we are. And as Rumi said, we don't necessarily need to seek love. We just need to seek all the places that we have contracted or all the little barriers we've put up to this higher frequency that we are. We are already high frequency beings. And that seems to be the job for many of us right now to remember that and then to live from these higher frequencies on a daily basis. So let's start with a meditation. Kristen and Scott invited me to do a practice. It's very simple. It's based on the HeartMath Institute's heart coherence practice. If you don't know of the HeartMath Institute, I highly recommend them. They are doing pioneering work excuse me while I put my timer on. One of the things about being high frequency is you also get to navigate all the little details. (laughs) So this is based on heart coherence practice. It's also based on my study and work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, another pioneer in this field. And it's also based on my own 30 plus years practice of meditation and mantra. It's very simple. We're going to be using breath and we're going to be doing heart-centered breathing. We're going to be cultivating what heart math calls a regenerative, elevated emotion. And we're going to be filling our body and we're going to be surrounding our body, remembering that we are not just physical, we are spiritual, we are soul in a human body, and that we also have an energy field, a bio field that is actually tangible and can be measured. And when we cultivate high vibrational frequencies, we build our field. So let's go ahead and begin. We're going to begin our meditation practice now. You can do this with your eyes open. You can do this with your eyes closed. I'm going to close my eyes for the most of this. And if you're not comfortable closing your eyes, go ahead and just lower your gaze. We want the body to start to move into more of a relaxed space so that we can be cultivating more of these higher frequencies. So let's go ahead and if you're comfortable, close your eyes. And then closing our eyes, we're gonna bring bring awareness into our body. Just starting to notice our breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Just simply right now bringing awareness to the in-breath and the out-breath. We're breathing in and we're centering. And we're breathing out and we're relaxing. We're breathing in and we're centering. And we're breathing out and we're relaxing and becoming more present in this moment. And then breathe normally, continuing in a relaxed manner. Just notice your body for a moment. Placing our attention into our body and noticing if there's any tension or areas of tightness and without judgment, witnessing them and inviting that part of your body to relax and let go right now. 
So we're dropping deeper into our bodies. We're relaxing. We're resting. We're letting go. And then we're going to invite in now a positive emotion, a regenerative emotion, a high vibrational emotion. I'm going to utilize the emotion of love for this meditation, but you can invite in something, an emotion that feels resonant for you right now. That could be love. That could be joy, that could be gratitude, peace, kindness. What energy do you want to cultivate in this moment together right now? And if you can't think of something or if something doesn't immediately pop up, then I invite you to think of someone you love and their smiling face. Or a moment when you're really laughing or joyful. Or a moment in nature when you felt really peaceful. And just see if you can activate and invite in a positive regenerative emotion. And I'll label that tonight love. So we're inviting in this higher frequency of love. And then let's go ahead and we're going to begin to do heart center breathing very simply, very easily, bringing our attention into our heart center, our heart chakra. Just start breathing in and out of your heart center, gently, easily, peacefully. We're just breathing in and out of the heart center right now. Bringing energy in and breathing out of the center. And then on your next in breath, as you breathe in, imagine you're breathing in this positive emotion that you're cultivating tonight. Imagine you're breathing in love, breathing in this positive emotion, breathing in, and as you breathe out, you're breathing out this positive emotion. So you're breathing in love, and you're breathing out love. And you're breathing in love. And you're breathing out love. One more time, breathing in love. And on the next out breath, imagine this regenerative emotion is filling your whole chest area. So we're going to start expanding this breath a little. As you breathe in your positive emotion, it fills your heart. And as you breathe it out, it fills your chest area. As you breathe it in, it fills your heart center. And as you breathe it out, it fills your entire chest area with this positive emotion. And again, this time we're going to extend it a little further into our body. So as you breathe it in, Breathe into the heart center. And as you breathe out, now imagine this fills your entire body. This love, this light, this energy. So you're breathing in this positive energy. And you're breathing out and this energy is filling your entire being. Your entire body. One more time, breathing in. And this energy flows out on the out breath, filling your entire body all the way from your head down to your toes, vibrating with this regenerative high vibrational frequency. 
And then just breathe normally for a moment. And see if you can feel this energy in your body, whether it's love, gratitude, joy, peace, kindness. We've been utilizing our breath to invite this energy to be more present in our system now and in our body. And then we're going to do three more breaths together. And this time we're going to breathe this energy into our heart center and we're going to then send it and fill our entire energy field. Imagine like as if you have a ball of light around you. So when you're ready, breathing in again, positive emotion into your chest area. And then breathing out and this positive emotion flows out from your heart center and fills your entire auric field, your bio field, your energy field. And again, breathing in. And breathing out and sending this energy into your field, building your field, strengthening your field, filled with light, positive energy, positive emotions, positive vibrations. And then one more time, breathing in. And breathing out and sending this out into your field, strengthening your field, becoming more light, higher frequency, more love, joy, peace, kindness. And then relax and breathe normally. And just breathe for a moment. Just feel your body and see if you can notice any sensations in your body. Might be a tingling, might be energy flowing, might just feel a little bit calmer. And then take a moment to put your hand on your heart, if that's comfortable to do so. And as we begin tonight's sharing, just start with giving thanks to yourself for showing up tonight to cultivate high vibrational frequencies. Give thanks to yourself for your courage to choose to be love and peace and light at this time and joy and gratitude and kindness. And then relaxing your hands and taking a few breaths. And if your eyes are closed, opening your eyes, coming back to the room, this present moment together and staying in a meditative state we're going to continue this practice of cultivating regenerative emotions with our dear sister, Kristen. She's going to lead us in a solo journey to help us deepen this experience. And so I invite you just to relax and let the sound bathe over you. You can do your heart centered breathing, filling your heart, filling your body, surrounding your body. And you might even want to send this energy out to someone or somewhere or people that are in need right now. We are more powerful than we know and our high vibrational frequencies really do make a difference. Thank you, Kristen. I hand it over to your sister. Let us see what wants to
enjoying this moment of depth of such high frequency but let's also lovingly twinkle our beloved soul sister Kristen and her predecessor Nikita I do want to read a few comments that have come in from our, our audience. Mara writes, very beautiful. Reverend Jeffrey writes, no words. And when Jeffrey doesn't have words, that's really something. <laughs> Waterfall Good says, um, uh, we are now fully together. Richard writes, that was amazing. So much love. Casey writes, divine. Darina Joy writes, absolutely beautiful, enchanting, magical, angelic. Karen S. writes, Kristen, your songs are always so hauntingly beautiful and otherly worldly. Um, Ellie writes, the angels are singing through her to help us. What an amazing gift for us to receive. So grateful. Susan writes, she's channeling an ocean of love. Um, and Dr. Laura, this will be the last one that I'll read. And please remember to stay muted, everybody. Dr. Laura writes, I always see Kristen in my mind's eyes as being surrounded by hundreds of angels, all singing with her. But of course, their voices are so high frequency that we cannot always hear them. Once in a while, I do hear them a bit. But I bet the animals fully hear them all the time. My dog always perks up when Kristen sings. Oh, blessings. Thank you. Infinite gratitude. Infinite gratitude. I love that vision. And I often really feel that I'm singing with all of our, well, I always call in my guides and I feel them around me, but also just the angelic worlds. I love that vision of singing with those choirs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and now I have the beautiful blessing of kind of staying in this bliss mode as I introduce a woman who's very familiar with the bliss frequency <laughs> Mahalia Mermaid she and I met last year at Patricia Kodorobles's event in 
um, Tucson, Arizona, and it was, I would say it was remembrance at first sight and definitely a, a remembrance of love at first sight. <laughs> yes. Mahalia is an incredible channel of the Lyrian, the Lyrian Council, the dolphins, the whales. She has gone through her own, I, I will let her share her story, but she has, she has definitely walked her own challenges in life and learned to heal and learn to tune to calling in these high, higher frequencies to find balance and retuning and now is able to share these gifts with others through her Brain Bliss Academy. Is that right? Brain Bliss Academy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With a with a dash in the middle, and uh, and I will turn it over to you. You are in for a serious treat. I I am excited. I'm very excited. Mahalia, biggest hugs and welcome. Uh, Heavenly to be with all of you and Kristen. Thank you for switching on our bliss molecules and our sparkle. Thank you for your extraordinary channel, your instrument, and for inspiring all of us. And to Scott for having me on. I'm feeling blessed and honored. Uh, the journey from PTSD and multiple concussions to becoming a medical musician took about three decades, but here, here we are. And the blessings of what I discovered that trauma can bring is the knowingness of the depths of the deepest, darkest challenges and how powerful the human body is in its recovery when it's given the right music, the right sound and vibration. And Edgar Casey in the 1940s said the future of medicine would be sound and music and that future is here now. Thank you again for hosting this incredible show and platform to support the listeners to dive into the deep deep science of our body. Uh, the brain is extraordinary crystal, the bones, the blood, we are sheer crystal and our cells number one job is to sing. And so when I was in PTSD and deep suffering, my, my body was muted, my brain just wasn't singing in coherence. And as I used neurofeedback, my brain got activated again and my body switched on in the proper flow of the molecules that create pleasure as opposed to pain and suffering. And from that pleasure state, I was blessed to spend time on Maui one day all by myself at Little Beach. I got to meet a humpback whale and that humpback whale sang to me and it is though I just had enough coherence in my brain from my seven concussions. I had done enough work to have that encounter and in that moment, the beautiful angel of the sea lit up my brain and body even more and in fact completely cleared the trauma history which is a deep delta vibration that that is held in the body and then from there went to big island hawaii got to uh, swim with the beautiful spinner dolphins and one day a group of kahuna spinners i'd say i like to say it was about 33 uh, somehow pinged me, sing to me, sang to me, rang me, and my body again lit up. Uh, so when I came out of the water that day, I had the most joy-filled day of my life, and a dear soul had a recurring nightmare. She asked for my help, and all of a sudden I could see the trauma from her brain where she'd been hit a few years earlier, and then the sounds came out of my mouth that mimic the whales and dolphins and the trauma left her field around her head and then she that night and the next morning stopped having the nightmare she actually had a beautiful dream and and then her brain seemed to regenerate after that so that was a journey of a lifetime to get to this moment where now i offer uh my programs to help people with brain trauma, PTSD, anything to do with the brain that affects then the body. Anytime anyone is in pain and suffering is actually not most natural. What is most natural is pleasure. And there's a choice in the cells 
I don't mean to simplify it, but it's either pain or pleasure. So when we sing, and Kristen, what you just performed for us, activates those bliss molecules, we could say anandamide, serotonin, dopamine, uh, the DMT from our pineal gland, the spirit molecules, so everything gets lit up. And then the body's innate intelligence knows then how to create new pathways to help the body get back to ecstasy, get back to bliss, get back to this feeling of heaven on earth. Because as we know, it's we're, it's an inside job and from the inside out, we can be the garden of Eden within here and then let that paradise fountain out of, of us. And so, yeah, earlier you were asking, so what, what are some of the things uh, you do in the morning? I love that morning ritual. So two, I do a few things myself, but one of the things I do is I give myself a hummer in the morning. <laughs> so <laughs> I hum and, and then it's a soft, gentle, lower brain whale hum. Kristen knows that I have some little innuendos in my <laughs> so the 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 lower brain what I call whale hum but there's there's books out about humming and there's so much more talk about it is we just are we hum softly and gently and reverb in this crystal bowl or if you like tuning fork so you think of your body temple as a full instrument and so you're telling the neural pathways to come higher, to actually ascend to the higher brain, this newest neocortex that is our innocence, it's our childlike playfulness, it's our imagination, and it's also connecting us with the plasma, the infinite ocean of devotion that is all around us at all times and actually living within us. We are walking jellyfish and we have these immortal cells that want to sing. So. What the whales and dolphins help us to do is, is just clean the space a little bit so that those cells can sing and so that our brain waves can reharmonize back to their rainbow state. And then what happens is miracles keep happening. So as we glitter, sparkle, as our cells sing and our bones are vibrating with the stars, the planets, everything's moving in this living liquid of our body, temple, and instrument, then we become that attractor factor for more good, more abundance, more health and well-being, as opposed to the repeat cycle that trauma can bring, which I lived that very well. And I, again, created a school for that to help people out of that uh, looping cycle and into the heavenly blissful cycle. Should I keep going? <laughs> Yes, please do. Okay. Absolutely. Do you have, if you have a question or, okay. So, yeah. so, uh, and then with the help of the Lyran High Council of Angels who've been with me for, since I was born and they are here also to help humanity direct from Lyra. Think of them as gentle pussy cats who want to cradle us with the most high frequency galactic energy. And what I was shown too is the whale and dolphin multidimensional consciousness comes from the energy of Lyra and the great central sun, which is there right next to, which is also our heart. The heart space here is a great central sun. And so we're becoming this looping mechanism of sheer mm -hmm. extraordinary light naturally. And the whales and dolphins come down from Lyra riding on a rainbow and they carry all of the frequencies of the chakras, of the outer chakras, the inaudible and audible. So being a mermaid, which I never planned to be one, but it happened very organically, is is having uh, mermaid ears or merman, if you're a merman and you have really clear, clear um, sentient, clear audience ears. So we pick up in audibles. So like a dog whistle, the dog can hear the whistle, but we might not be able to. So where the whales and dolphins also help us is in this inaudible range, way beyond 20,000 hertz and way below uh, the deep delta, low, low, deep, super, super deep sounds uh, that as Kristen channels the angels that we can't quite hear, it's the same idea. They're the angels of our sea, they're here to help humanity. So 
in this, there is this light language, there is soul language that we all have. And think of the Lyrians as extraordinary acoustic instruments. They're refined, delicate, gentle crystal. They're super sensual, super sensuous. And they they infuse us with the, the delicate, high-frequency, angelic tones. Those are embedded deep in our cells as light beings and deep in the spark of our heart, which is the bundle of hiss in medical terms. But we could call that our threefold flame, our I am presence, our the holy of holies. And so in this, I like to speak of it as water whispering in the holy waters. So there was a woman on a Steve Harvey show the other day that that prepared for her question moment with Holy Spirit, activate, activate, something like that. <laughs> think about the fact that you're in plasma and think of it as holy water, activate as well. So when you speak out, when we speak out, when we sing out, we're sending out extraordinary sacred geometry, shape from our heart, that love, the joy, the gratitude, the, the uh, compassion, the the passion, the light within us is sounding and whispering to the water all around us. So as we are gathered here together, we're all creating a larger geometry that is assisting with the elevation of all of humanity and all of Mother Gaia and all other planets because we're making a bigger beach ball <laughs> full of goodness full of our magic and our collective coherence from the heart. So thank you for doing that. It's something I did on Maui recently, last November actually, to assist also with uh, the whales to come back into those nursing waters next to Lahaina. Their nursery is right there and bless the people of Lahaina and the Hawaiian people and and so as I sound right now, the whale tones, they are going to come out as a bit of a delta tone. The delta tone is meant, again, to help dematerialize any shadow that has to do with unresolved traumas. And then the dolphin tones come along and then sing to those singing cells to help us sparkle even more. In the light language here, a prayer coming through, Kuyatsyama Kuenya. The Lyrians want us as a human race to deeply marry our heart and our high brain this, as, as soon as possible. <laughs> In this glorious moment, holy water activate, holy spirit activate. Zuts mitsu hetsu yetiatio woyanyatio koye ye ho yenotsu we wu zi zu he. <sighs> Breathe in the luminous light, connect in with the uh, colloids of light and life drug from the sun, breathe in the adamantine particles and all of the stardust from all the star nations here to serve us, here to help us with our upliftment. The whales and dolphins have also prepared my harmonics and hurts to be in a 432 in harmony with the universe to Meet the music of your cells. Ooh. 
I invite you to tone along with me the deep H U who and sing as though you had a school of kahuna dolphins all around you and that as you sound we will continue to build this Merkaba beach ball, this living, breathing baby of life force and send that up into the skies around this planet and touch all of life on this earth to regenerate even more, to flourish even more. So it's dolphin tone who two more times with me. Big breath in. Ah, to get more of this energy, you can join me on the first of every month for our Global Bliss Energy Medicine Transmission. It's 9 to 9.20 a.m. Pacific Time, found on the events page at brain-mini-bliss.com. And if you want to connect more with the Lyrans, uh, join me at lyranlotus.com. We do a seven-day complimentary free experience where your subtle body light body gets lifted with such ease and grace and gentleness to your very own Lyran Lotus Sonic Scalar Love Pod. And from there, your energy body gets amped with the diamond light frequencies, the connection with the great central sun, and these extraordinary tall like trees pearly white like selenite crystal, bone building, heavenly angels, and then that translates down into your physical 3D body. So we've had incredible testimonies since we did our full launch in January. You can check us out at lyranlotus.com. And the second thing I do in the morning, what I've done for 30 years is I have some salt. So this is another morning ritual. I give myself a hummer and I eat a nugget of salt. And that's what I do to start my day. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, well, we, I'm going to read a few comments. We've got a couple of questions as well. And then we're going to take a look at your website. Um, but, you know, the, the first comment I want to read is wonderful from Karen S., who points out that her grandmother was always humming and lived to be 98 years old with very little illness and a sound mind. So there's, there's a good testimonial for your humming there. Bahaya. Um, a lot of people, of course, talking about being mermaids, their own relationship to the cetacean nation. Um, and there's a question about some say that cats also come from Lyra. Is there anything that you can offer about that? Mm -hmm. Yes, the Lyran High Council of Angels are very cat like. Some Lyrans are bird like. Some people, or some Lyrian people, uh, uh, Lyrians are connected with many people, all of us in fact, and so some really are quite etheric, like a selenite crystal or a diamond, very refined, pure diamond, so very angelic-like, and it's, it's, yeah, so definitely think of them <laughs> as gentle like a kitten or a pussycat, they just want to help humanity. They're here to serve us and help us be comfortable in being brighter, in shining like the sun. Beautiful. Um, a couple, one more comment, and then I'm going to go to your brain bliss. Um, Ellie writes, this is so resonant. Beautiful work that Mahalia is doing. The whales are one of the most sentient beings on the planet, and they hold the world's records, which is... Um, what I, I had the good fortune to spend time with John Lilly before he passed away. And of course, John is who uh, came up with the term, the cetacean nation. Anyway, uh, Ellie continues and says, I've remotely healed numerous individual whales, and the whales as a collective group. This is my most sacred work, along with elephants, working with elephants. So thank you very much, Ellie, for that work. 
And we are going to take a look at your Brain Bliss website. By the way, just so you know, um, your Lyran Lotus isn't up right now. That website's got a little something's going on, so take a look at it. But brain-bliss.com is happening. And tell us a little bit more about how people can connect with you here. Is there any particular spot on this website you want me to uh, guide people to? So one of the best things to do is if they want to subscribe at the bottom of this homepage or watch any of these three videos or dive in and research my, I think I have 14 programs now on here from concussion reconstruction to return to root resonance, which is helping people with recovering from sexual trauma or anything to do with the tailbone sacrum. This body of work is, a, is deep in neuroscience. I just am about to launch my book called The Medical Musician about this, the science of how sound transforms our biology connected with the whales and dolphins. And here they can click here and actually hopefully go to the Lyran Lotus page so they can see what else they would get with me. Uh, we do a Zoom every month, also on the 1st at 10 a.m. to 10.30. So they can connect in with me personally in that monthly phase and ask me questions. Plus I do another energy medicine transmission. We've had a full range of miracles with the whale and dolphin support, the Lyran support, and it is uh, what our dear friend, the elephants are the uh, whales of earth and the whales are our angels of the sea, all whales, sperm whales, blue whale, gray whale, humpback whale. In fact, they give us more, they give us more oxygen than all the trees on earth with their digestive process. So it is imperative that we protect our dolphins and our whales and how they serve humanity. So yes, brain-bliss.com, there's, there's lots of a variety of things to dive into. And we don't, I don't make any promises or guarantees at all. And yet what I'd love to do is bridging with the medical world. So people start to utilize the science of sound and music in their recovery process. The brain is magical. You know, it's the most greatest supercomputer on earth. And so if it's just given a little bit of correct sound, as I said earlier, it will change the person's life. I, I used to stutter, have panic attacks, short and long-term memory loss, fears, phobias, uh, poverty. It was, a, it was a very, very challenging way of living. And I just want to help people with who suffer like that because it's, and to, to free themselves because as we do, and dolphins are self-healing and they help each other in the ocean to heal the tribe. And this is what I believe Mother Nature and Great Creator designed us for, is to be like dolphins on Earth and to actually self-heal, self-regenerate, and then help our tribes, help our uh, each other sing to each other's bodies in a way just like the dolphins do and the whales do to amplify our regenesis. Like the cells know how to regenerate when they're given that environment. And, and then, yeah, so... Oh. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, Mahalia. You're such a beautiful being. And I love that you are able to weave in the science and your experience and the spiritual realms. And, and it's all in such a cohesive, joyful way. That's the thing. You make everything so, um, so joyful for the body, for the mind, for the spirit. And uh, it was such a it was such a joy last summer actually to watch hundreds of people fall in love with you and then watching you do healing sessions one-on-one -on -one and the people who were having such profound one-on-one -on -one experiences and by the end of the week Mahalia had a whole fan club following her around <laughs> it, it was I really enjoyed just watching your your magic um spread so much joy so thank you for being here and spreading your joy in this in this family and in this community Love you so much. Mermaid kisses to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Mahalia. What a wonderful gift you are to our world and to our awakening world. And I hope uh, I hope you'll come back and be on with us again. Love you. Oh, Kristen, you do have great taste. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when Kristen and I were planning this show and she got really excited, she said, oh, Mahalia, if I could get Mahalia, that would be so amazing. And um, now I know why you were so excited. <laughs>
she is like a dose of frequency raising just in a even one minute with Mahali is like instant frequency raise. <laughs> Absolutely. And Mahali, make sure you read the chat. There's a lot of a lot of comments I didn't get to. A lot of people really appreciating you quite a bit. Well, I get to introduce, once again, my good friends, Heather and Donnie. Uh, they were on the show a couple times, but not for quite a while. Um, and they are all about transformation. So they're the perfect people. There they are set up and ready. Are you going to come on up and uh, come on up and say hello first? Well, there's Donnie. Let's go. DJ, and me. Hello, everyone. <laughs> well, then we'll take you through a little journey and then we'll come say hello. Okay. okay. That sounds perfect. We're all set here with the Let me just introduce briefly that um, they've created the Black Swan Temple. It's dedicated to helping others discover their true and divine beauty and nature and assisting in the transformation of humanity through their mystical alchemy experiences. And we're going to have a little homeopathic dose of that right now. Oh, thank you, Scott. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here with you all tonight. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. And um, feeling to share this meditation. It seems like a beautiful segue. So synergistic tonight on everybody's work and offerings. Um, I'm in, and we're at a scene ministers, priestess, and a priestess of the Temple of Isis. And so our work really combines the mystery and magic through ritual and sacred sound of the divine feminine and the teachings of the ancient Essenes, the wisdom teachings. So this meditation um, is believed that Jesus and Mary and Joseph and John the Baptist were all Essenes. And so this is a divine light transmission. And then they talked about Essene, um, Yeshua basically clearing Mary Magdalene's seven chakras. That's what I, they, they say she, he cast out seven demons, but I feel like he unlocked her seven chakras <laughs> in our, um, so um, may this divine light transmission serve to connect us with the mysteries and magic of this time, this holy weekend this time of Easter, this time in the Great Transfiguration. May we experience this transfiguration within and without. So I invite you to turn your awareness within. Perhaps lowering your eyes beginning to follow your breath as it goes in and out. And now envisioning over top your head a beautiful golden ball of light. And into this golden sun we do call in all of our energy. We call in our higher self, and the inner child, and the wise elder. We call in our higher self. We call in the maiden, the adolescent, the lover, the beloved the mother, the father, the empress, the emperor, the shaman, the mystic, the healer, the priestess, the priest. And we call in the divine light, the energies of the Christ consciousness, spiraling in through and around this golden ball of light. And now slowly and gently, we do call this light in, in through the crown of our head, 
in through that thousand petaled violet lotus flower that is open in on the crown of your head and ready to see receive the divine nourishing and activating and blessing you with the gifts of your crown chakra the gifts of receiving divine guidance divine wisdom divine knowledge divine inspiration an ability to become an alchemist and transform the world you, around you with love This light continues down, bathing the hemispheres of your brain and bringing you into fuller consciousness. cleansing and purifying and anointing you with the gifts of the brow chakra the gifts of heightened imagination vision heightened intuition clairvoyance clairaudience wisdom, knowledge, and a deep sense of peace of mind. expands to fulfill your whole head and nourishing your physical eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, rejuvenating on a cellular level as it moves down now into your throat, spiraling in through and around your throat chakra. Anointing and activating the gifts of the throat chakra within you. Blessing you with the gifts of freedom in your self-expression. Ability to be an attentive, compassionate listener. And a clear channel for the divine to express through in exalted way. This light continues down, 
moving down into your shoulders, moving down your arms and into your hands, filling your arms and hands with the divine light, filling your palm chakras with the divine light so that all that you touch may be blessed by the fullness of your being. In this light. The light spirals in through around your chest, filling your lungs with the light so that you might breathe the fullness of your being moment by moment. Spiraling in through and around your heart chakra anointing you with the gifts of the heart chakra, an open heart, anointing you with the gifts of unconditional divine love, great compassion, empathy, healing, forgiveness, harmony, and deep inner peace. great warmth, joy, radiance, magnetism, allowing you to effortlessly magnetize into your life all good things. purifying your sacral chakra, anointing you with the gifts of great creativity, balanced emotions, harmonious relations, and great passion.
pelvis and into your root chakra at the base of your spine. Moving down your legs, filling your upper legs and lower legs and feet with the divine light. Cleansing and purifying your root and foot chakras, anointing you with the gifts of great presence, stability, groundedness, resilience, optimal health, and great courage. Just as a caterpillar wraps up in a cocoon, it then undergoes a metamorphosis. It dissolves, dissolving into a soup-like substance where its marginal cells begin to awaken and stir triggering the next phase of the being's evolution, giving it wings to take flight and soar to new dimensions. Well, you too are undergoing a metamorphosis, dissolving into the light where our imaginal cells awaken and stir, triggering the next phase of our soul's evolution, giving us those wings to take flight and soar to new dimensions. And there's nothing for you to do now but just to allow
as you're ready, just take a moment and a breath. Maybe place your hands on your heart as you take a little stretch as we slowly and gently come back. We'll come back to you. Let's uh, go to gallery view and start by giving a beautiful, beautiful awakening world twinkle to that incredible experience that they just took us through. Wow. Wow. <sighs> I'm going to bring Mahaya up just because it was so beautiful how you... Uh, <laughs> we have to bring what in the whales and the dolphins. <laughs> That was for you. Those are Maui <laughs> whales and dolphins. <laughs> my my brain turned into a heart. Oh, <laughs> you sweet. guys! Wow, your voice. Oh, the music. Oh, thank you for singing on Maui and bringing the energy up for all the people of Maui to recover with your extraordinary music, the divine union. Your Twin, your your masculine and feminine together so so holy so divine so perfect timing such alignment for us to witness you and uh, give us this deeper alignment within for this eclipse coming to this wow your voice oh thank you mm -hmm. whales and dolphins oh. <laughs> thank you so much yeah it's been a blessing to be here I am Maui serving our community at this time. Really, this, this um, the recovery continues. So we do new moon and full moon community ceremonies here, and we do other lots of lots of things as much as we can for our community. And we have an online community too. So during the eclipses, we have been doing um, special um, classes, yes. events, movement, sound healing, yoga. Um, Donnie's going to do an NBC class next week because <laughs> this Libra <laughs> eclipse is, you know, about relationships, a lot of things that we are re-evaluating, re re-examining, and finding our own balance within our own peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read a few comments and then I'd love to hear from Kristen. Pam writes, whales and dolphins and butterflies, oh my, <laughs> powerful on so many levels. Um, uh, Katie writes, fantastic. Waterfall writes, my heart, soul, and body, heart are filled with gratitude for this amazing show tonight. Thank you, Scott and Kristen. Carol writes, how did I get here? Wow. <laughs> uh, DR writes, heaven on earth. Reverend Jeffrey writes, when I'm here with all these amazing energies, I do feel like I'm already in heaven. Uh, and Nikita writes, thank you, Heather and Donnie. That was truly healing, sound, and light medicine. Just a few more comments. Um, uh, Waterfall is with us. She's one of our regular Global Peace Tribers. Um, Ayata writes, thank you, Heather and Donnie. That was profoundly nourishing to my body and my soul. Um, so, yeah. Wow, that was so, so beautiful. I, I feel in bliss. And it was incredible as you were taking us in. I saw this incredible mirror. I was in a class earlier today and I loved this. The teacher was saying, um, actually, I see human humanity. We are each like an upside down tree of life. And we have to think of rooting to our spirit selves, reconnecting our roots to our spirit selves and bringing that nourishment into the human body. And so as you started the meditation, I saw I was really feeling that nourishment coming in from the crown and then down through the body. And I was thinking, wow, 
so beautiful. Well, I wasn't thinking because I was just being and experiencing <laughs> and you really <laughs> took us there. You really, really took us there. Right. And I agree with Mahalia, Yay. your incredible um, synergy together is just so magnificent and what a blessing to us all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a uh, joy and pleasure to share at this time. And what a special honor and day to be here with you all. <laughs> on this resurrection weekend, on this uh, yeah. incredible weekend of Easter. I also have to say I'm a little bit of a proud papa because I helped introduce Heather and Donnie to each other. So. He totally introduced mm -hmm. us back <laughs> in 2010, 11. Yes. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. <laughs> he didn't have any idea who's trying to make a match. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. He wasn't even try. <laughs> but, but we'll say you did, Scott. It worked you out. Can. It definitely worked out. <laughs> yeah, we did. We love so you. they have amazing offerings, and we can learn all about them um, by going to blackswantemple.org. Blackswantemple.org. And we're going to go through it and take a look at some of what they're offering. And I agree, the world needs all of us to rise in our greatness. Um, now, the spring equinox experience, that that's pens, yeah. right? Yeah. But you take people on amazing trips to Egypt. Tell us about your sacred pilgrimages that you've done and the one coming up in October. Yeah, so this is our sixth um, sacred pilgrimage to Egypt, and this one's um, super powerful. This year of the wood green dragon, I'm a wood green dragon, and it's also eight years. So we got a few wood green dragons coming with us already who are sound healers. We get to be in the King's Chamber on November 1st, 11 1, which is um, the, the new moon, and it's the, the lunar Samhain. So it's the day of the year when the veils are thinnest yes. between the worlds and you can most easily receive messages from the guides and the, the king's chamber is a great ascension um, ascension chamber really. So if you liked our sound healing, we get we teach people sound healing and we all do vocal sound healing in the king's chamber and you get to do experience sound I was healing. Saying, not just in the king's <laughs> chamber, we actually do the sound healing to people in the sarcophagus of this king's chamber, oh. which um, is probably one of the greatest out of body experiences I've ever experienced in my entire life. It was was unbelievable, to be honest, it was completely out of this world. It's a very magical portal of energy and the king's the, the sarcophagus is the exact same size as the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was probably sitting in there at the time we took it out. And I have no idea what the Ark of the Covenant is now. Yeah. But the King's Chamber is there. And of course, the sarcophagus that used to, in my opinion, um, house, used to be a place of resting for Osiris. Yeah, then we have a, we have, so it's a 15 day pilgrimage and eight days we have a private um, boat for just for our group. So on the boat, we do our sound healing, we do gentle yoga, we teach people how to use the sacred instruments. Um, Egyptian instruments, the um, sistrum, and it's luxurious and beautiful journey. Great and with, our groups are smaller, so you know there's a lot of big groups that go, but our groups we only take a maximum of um, like 18 people. And so if you're interested in that, please visit our website. We do have an early bird special. You can get a thousand dollars off our trip. I'm happy to extend it to you guys for a group. It was going to be up tomorrow, but um, we can send it through the the middle of the month because we do like to sit and talk to anyone who's interested in coming and really connect and um, make sure it's the right group. Yeah, and right for you. Let's see if you have any questions. All right. So again, the way we do that is you go to blackswantemple.org blackswantemple.org and I'm going to go back through myself right now and um, if you scroll down just a little bit you'll see where they have all of their offerings uh, sacred travel sound healing mystery school and many retreats um, and by the way their many retreats at their home in Maui is amazing they're on the jungle side of the island I've been there many many times it's gorgeous magical uh, it's a wonderful thing to do. So if you're going to Maui, stay with Donnie and Heather. Um, or if you want to go to Egypt, click here. And that's where you can uh, get more details 
about their um, each pilgrimage. Um, yeah. so, thank you both so much. I love you both so much. You know that. Yeah. Thank we you, Donnie and Heather. You. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be in a, such a grand, wonderful community of like-minded souls. It's and it's an honor and privilege that we're able to share this around the world. That we're yeah. actually able to just connecting with you guys from over here, little Maui, and for wherever you all are, and just to be in the in the impression, but that you you know be, to be in, in the audience of such divine beings, it just gives us all hope that the world is evolving to a better place you know uh, it's like was said earlier today about the imaginal cells and you know uh, i've done 500 of these shows since i started uh four years ago during the pandemic and every every weekend every or every show i should say amazing beings so many amazing beings and they really are all these beautiful beings that are the imaginal cells coming together to create the new paradigm and um and really, the message is the same over and over, that um, there are a lot of us finding each other. And there's a, a beautiful heaven on earth that we are co-creating and that we will be experiencing together. Absolutely. And we get to experience it little bits at a time by going on retreats with you or coming to the awakening world or just listening to Christian Hoffman sing. <laughs> Thank you. I am going to uh, roll into the Global Peace Tribe announcements. Um, Scott, I just wanted, to, I, is Casey still here? I believe she only had her room rented until eight, so I want to make sure Ooh. we don't. Um, is Casey still on? I'm not, I'm having trouble finding her. Let me see. Um, we had Global Peace Tribe announcements next and then Casey, but, but Casey, how are you on time? You you okay. Okay. I just wanted to check in because I remember you said six to eight. Okay. We won't be long. We won't okay, be. Blessings. Yeah. Um, so I want to start the announcements um, with a couple more serious ones. You know, more and more we have such a beautiful community. And in our community, we take care of each other um, and we hear about each other. Um, and uh, people have been asking, of course, about Eleanor Joy, and people have been asking about Piper Dellums. Um, I received a long audio message from Piper this morning, um, and you may remember her grandfather is the actor, her godfather, I should say, is the actor Lou Gossett Jr. He was on The Awakening World with Piper earlier this year, I guess it was last year now, and he passed away. Um, Lou Gossett passed away. So, um, but it was really sweet having him on the show. Piper's having some real challenges. Um, the oncologist team she was working with um, have not been able to find the right place for her to have the next surgical procedure. So she's in a holding pattern. It's challenging. So please keep Piper in your thoughts and your prayers. Um, our beloved Eleanor Joy is with us uh, via waterfall. So I'm going to put the spotlight on Eleanor Joy for a moment. There she is. And um, would love to hear from you, Eleanor Joy. How are you doing? Well, I'm also in a holding pattern. You can hear me, right? Yes, we can. We hear you well. Like Piper, but for a different reason. And it's the long weekend. And it turns out I need a special pacemaker, not just an ordinary pacemaker. <laughs> and my friends have a lot of comments about that. Nothing ordinary about Eleanor. <laughs> so... Anyway, and then I also have to have an angiogram, and none of that will happen until sometime after Tuesday. Wow. So um, I've been transferred to Victoria, which is why I'm with Waterfall. Very nice of her to come over. And um, I'm just waiting. Hmm. Well, we are going to continue to keep our prayers for you. We love you so much, Eleanor Joy. Um, and um, I am imagining you need a special one because you have such a special heart. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> we love you very much. Thank you for we being with you, us. We love you, Eleanor Joy. Thank you. And this show has just been amazing for me, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Kristen and Scott. Mm, our pleasure. We're sending you so much love, so much healing, and and may you find that special 
heart resonator, re- heart resonator, <laughs> just as you need. Oh, mm-hmm. love you. Thank you so much for you. Okay. You know, Kristen, we have one more community member to acknowledge, and this is an especially sad one. Uh, some of you may remember Steek. Uh, he was on the show a few years ago. He came to our Sedona retreat, um, and Sadiq uh, chose to take his own life on Wednesday. He posted a, a very beautiful post on Facebook acknowledging the choice that he was making. Um, and he also sent a letter to his brother. And in his letter, he specifically uh, uh, sent love and appreciation to myself and to the Global Peace Tribe. Um, uh, and we're going to uh, have a probably a, a greater online memorial. His brother has sent me a lot of photographs, but we're going to arrange another time for his brother and one of his soul sisters to come on and talk a little bit more. And we'll do a little bit lengthier um, tribute to Sadiq. He had a huge heart. And you know, Kristen, he so wanted to make a difference in the world. And he struggled with this particular 3D reality. He struggled with the, he had challenges. Um, and so I, I like to believe that he is going to be able to do the great work that he wanted to do on the other side. Um, so let's all keep Sadiq and his family, his father, Bruce Greenberg, um, uh, Isaac Greenberg, his brother, in our thoughts and our prayers. Blessings to Sadiq. Now let's just take a moment. I go to gallery view and as always maximum grace for the soul journey of Sadiq. Maximum grace for the soul journey of Sadiq. Maximum grace for the soul's journey of Sadiq. And blessings for his family. can be definitely very complex times and they can feel overwhelming and I I think it's important no matter where we are to just remember that there are that there are tools that we can turn to that there are communities like this yeah. that there are people who love us and when we can find these little tools that we can implement they can just raise you know, help us to boost that much that we can get into a little bit of a better place and then reach out to community. And I think if anyone on this call is feeling um, like you've been going through challenging times, well, firstly, we hope that this evening has helped to raise your own inner vibration and really helped you to feel in more flow with yourself. But just know that you can reach out even here when you're on tonight. If you need some um, support, send me a little private message. Send Scott a little private message. Um, we're all here to love and support each other as a family. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Kristen. And tonight is the last show of the winter 2024 season. I want to thank all of you who have already registered for the spring season, but a lot of you haven't yet. So I just put into the chat box, uh, for those of you in the Zoom room, the link to register, because uh, you will need to register to get the new links for April, May, and June. Um, and we're going to start off uh, next week with uh, an amazing show. Uh, it's been mentioned, of course, that the Equinox is coming up. So I'm really happy. I've arranged for our favorite astrologer, Raquel Spring, is going to come on and, um, and she'll be on at the start of the show. So make sure you register, get the links and join us. This upcoming eclipse, uh, I think I said equinox, I meant eclipse, is really huge. It's a very epic one. And she's going to talk to us on Wednesday night, um, which is the third, all about how to prepare and work with the eclipse energy. The eclipse is on the 8th. 
We're also going to hear from, you heard about NVC. Well, Donnie and I both um, have taught and traveled and are very connected with Lori Grace, who's a master NVC teacher. She'll be with us on Wednesday night. And our own beloved Diara, all about spiritual diversity. And we're going to meet a new friend, Donna Martin. Um, and uh, we're going to hear from four wise women sharing their gifts. So definitely make sure that you join us. I want to acknowledge those of you who are watching on our broadcast partners, the Conscious Awakening Network, Ellen Steinfeld's YouTube channel, a lot of people watch on our YouTube channel, and of course on Facebook. Come and join us. Now's the time. We're starting a new spring season with amazing shows scheduled. We always have one on Wednesday night and Saturday night, plus a lot of special offerings. Like on April 18th, we've got a special evening with the Twin Ray. Um, we're also going to be having another exclusive interview, just us, with Marianne Williamson, and also one coming up with Andrew Harvey. So how do you join? Just go to globalpeacetribe.com globalpeacetribe.com. There's the twin ray right there. Um, and learn all about who we are and click register for the new season. When you click that link, it takes you to our registration page. You can come in at different levels, um, students and seniors for $22. And then there's extra benefits if you come in at a higher level. And I want to thank everybody who has already registered and who continues to support our awakening world. Uh, we do need your support. It's important. Let's grow this tribe. It's a beautiful community. And um, I really appreciate how we are growing and evolving and supporting each other as we all co-create this amazing awakening world. I'm going to turn it back over to beloved Kristen to introduce her dear friend, Keishi. Ah, oh, so excited to call on Keishi. Keishi Chai is a beloved friend, sister, and an incredible creator, um, director of dance companies, and visionary extraordinaire. She's been bringing through incredible projects lately that are based around connecting us to nature, and specifically just got back from launching a new show, show called Nature Stories. And she's going to share all about nature stories, but you can also find Keishi's um, work with her, her incredible work with women around the world, a public urban ritual experiment, where she gets all kinds of women from all different backgrounds, ages, shapes, colors, sizes. Keishi really calls in every kind of woman from every background and teaches them how to move together flow together, dance together, and just calls us back as women into the sacred union of, of movement. So I highly recommend checking out Keishi's uh, pure public urban ritual experiment. But I will turn it over to you, Keishi, and um, please share with us what you've been up to. And, uh, and I think you have a little video for us as well. Love you so much, sister. Oh. We're not hearing you, Casey, for some reason. Ah. Hello? Oh, yeah. There you are. Now we're hearing yeah. you. Okay. Sometimes. <laughs> It looks like my road microphone fell asleep, but it's all right. I have my backup. So when plan A doesn't work, switch to plan B. <laughs> um, that's one of my tools for raising frequency. Just be like water, go with the flow, and, and just be adaptable. I um, have a couple of different tools here that I wanted to share with what has worked for me as far as uh, making myself feel like I'm more alive and vibrating at a higher level. And one of my tools is to eat more cheesecake. <laughs> so what does that mean exactly? It's actually a metaphor. Um, yesterday I was having coffee and staring at the pastry shop, uh, area of this cafe in Berkeley. I'm in Berkeley right now, by the way. I'm attending the Bioneers 
environmental conference. This is the final day. So I took a couple of hours out to um, tune in with you wonderful folk. And I thought to myself, if I'm on planet Earth for one more day, what would my heart choose? And I wanted to eat the chocolate croissant. So that's exactly what I got. And I was just very pleased and enjoyed every bite. And that has really helped me over time. When I was a teenager, I struggled with an eating disorder and I used to put myself on all these diets and I would say chocolate cake is out and then I would just fantasize about it. So um, these days, if I want something, I'll have it. I have a great relationship with food. I absolutely did my inner work and that has allowed me to really tune in to what my body needs and wants. And so that's one of my tools. Lean into what your heart wants and, and nurture that inner child that wants the cheesecake or the chocolate cake and just let yourself have it and enjoy it. Um, so that's one of my tools. The next tool I'd like to share is green light yourself. So what does that mean? I had pitched a dance to Bioneers, this conference I'm in right now, and it was a fossil fuels turning into renewable energy dance where we come out as oil and then we become solar, wind, and wave power. And it wasn't picked up for this conference, but I decided to go ahead and do it anyway. And I launch Nature Stories in Berkeley. Um, this was earlier this month. And I guess the big takeaway from this is how many of you are waiting for somebody else to give you a green light before you move forward in the direction of your dreams, of your destiny, right? And how many of you already have the power to do something about it now, right now? Uh, so that's a question I want to pose. Um, I do want to go back just a little bit to September 2021. Uh, I had the privilege to attend a plant medicine ceremony in upstate New York and receive the download where I was holding our planet Gaia on my lap. She was a five-year-old girl who was just crying and bawling her eyes out and this was two days after the New York subways flooded and I had her on my lap and I was nurturing her I was comforting her and who wouldn't and she never asked me for my help but I I decided that I wanted to use my gifts in this lifetime with art with expression and design and help her uh, share her story, share her beauty, share her magnificence and share what's going on. Um, the good, bad, the ugly, all of it. And, and that has become a um, North Star for me, which is one of the reasons why I launched Nature Stories as well. Uh, I have been working with environmental work since 2017 regularly, and it's accelerating. It's this idea of going down one highway and then you get this download where you see this other path that you're meant to be on, but, but how do you get over there when you're on this highway? And you have to try and figure it out. And so for me, a large part of it too has to do with, with the climate crisis um, with that specific download of holding our planet on my lap. And I'm not that big. I'm only five foot three. I'm a petite Asian woman um, going from this idea of powerlessness. Like what can possibly I do to shift this behemoth? How can I move the needle? How can I make a difference? But then I realize I do have a voice. I do have power. Um, I can make a difference. And, and I think I sat with that for a good year or two before I felt like, okay, it's time to just go ahead, just move ahead. So with that, I want to share um, a couple of photographs from the recent version of Nature Stories. 
So let's have Scott pull up um, keishi.com forward slash nature stories. So this was in combination with scientists. I wanted to use art and science as a lens to have important conversations about a topic that affects all of us, which is nature. Uh, you can scroll down, Scott. And we brought to life the voice of Gaia, and that's Lodia, who is a, a professional singer, and she's also a dancer. And we have a dialogue with her as though we've invited our planet onto a podcast. And let's go to the next slide. And uh, similar to the wonderful meditation we just received, I became the butterfly. I wriggled out of my cocoon and and took flight. And that was really, really fun to do. And let's go to the next slide, please. We also brought to life the mycorrhizal networks that are underneath um, all our magnificent forests. And I uh, attended a wonderful talk today by a scientist called Merlin Sheldrake. And he and his team are mapping these underground networks that carry nitrogen and phosphorus and sugars between the root system because you know we can absolutely look to nature as our greatest teacher to learn how to work together as, as a community and help and uplift each other. Yeah, um, so that's Nature Stories. I welcome you to have a look at my uh, website and these are just a couple more photos. Yeah, you can just go quickly. Um, these are some photographs of the scientists and this, that's Rachel bringing to life the wind energy. We become ravens as well. And we had live music. So um, I received inquiries from Mississippi and from Paris and uh, Florida to have their version of nature stories. So if you are interested in, in doing that or exploring how you can tell your story with your community, that's one of my superpowers to come in and, and lead creative labs where people can create a, a show within a couple of days. Um, so that's something I really love doing. And that's with dancers and musicians and and people who don't necessarily identify as with that label of artists. Like for me, I believe that everyone is creative. Um, we were put on this planet into this life to be creative and to share our stories with each other. So that is also something that I, um, I work with people on. And I also wanted to give a big shout out to NVC, which is, uh, something that Scott is a big expert in and is going to highlight on April 3rd with his friend Lori. As Deepak Chopra says, let us not be angry peace activists. We need to find practices to pause and recenter. And so anger, although justified, needs to be transmuted. And for me personally, uh, learning about compassionate communication, nonviolent communication has been a fantastic way to gain more curiosity about what motivates the other. Um, what are their deepest needs? How can we arrive at a place where we, we respect each other's needs and, and create win-win situations? And another tool that helps me is asking myself this question. What would bring joy to my tomorrow self? So when I'm staring at those dishes at night that need to be done, my tomorrow self will be more joyful if I did them. <laughs> so, so it's a very simple question, but it really helps me. So I, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I think with that, um, perhaps we could play the three minute video for people who are curious about some of the work I've been doing.
So I, my f computer froze. I had it all queued up, and uh, we're going to try that again. I had it all queued up, and then clicked go, and the computer froze. Let's try it again. It's, it's okay. We don't need to see it. Casey. Woo. <laughs> Beautiful. It just reminds me how much incredible work you do all over the world. Casey uh, is one person who is always working on some new fantastic project that connects humans to each other and to the earth. And it, that just gave us a little taste into that. Let's go to gallery view, so everybody. Yeah. Twinkle her. Let's uh, give her some good global peace tribe twinkling. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I want to end with this quote from Rumi, which is, the heart knows the way. Run in that direction. Run in that direction. And, and for me, Nature Stories is my destiny, and I am running in that direction. Of course, juggling everything else. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I would love for it to be amplified so that it, it makes a difference because we all need to raise the consciousness of this planet up together. Yeah. I'm going to read a few comments. Uh, Ellie writes, it's so beautiful to see women coming together in their natural essence, like in the photos we just saw. I'm very, very touched. Ayata writes, Kishi, that was spectacular. How extraordinarily beautiful and inspiring. Susan writes, awesome dance expression. Carol writes, wow, what a choreography exhibition. Thank you for sharing. And lots of people saying, beautiful, glorious light, musical, beautiful, wow. And so it goes. Um, so um, thank you very much. And I so appreciate all the colors. You bring so much color into your, your presentations, Casey. And um, one more time, a reminder that you can learn all about Keishi Chai by going to her website, which is her name, K-A-E-S-H-I dot com. Keishi, K-A-E-S-H-I dot com. And that's where you can learn all about her projects, including the um, beautiful nature work that we were highlighting today. And thank you for helping us, Keishi. Every time you're on the show, you, you raise our frequency. Absolutely. Love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. What a privilege and honor it is to be here. Aww. Thank you, Casey. Well, my friend, Yay. well, we brought it in at 8.06. Chris and I always have this dialogue about well, how long the show is going to go. I know, I know, I know. We have very special, we're going to welcome back on a beautiful goddess, Nikita. And... Um, Nikita shared with us meditation earlier, but she has birthed this incredible world space that we can all be a part of, that we're all invited into called I Am Mantra. And I, you can go right to her website and join I Am Mantra and you get this beautiful mantra in your inbox every day. And it's one of the first things I do after my daily practice where I turn on my phone and I look at what is the mantra of the day? And Nikita is going to be taking us into that world of I am mantra and sharing also about her new I am mantra monthly and how we can get involved. I'll turn it over to Nikita. Mm. Thank sisters. you, Kristen. And Scott, would you mind keeping Kristen up with me for a minute? I would love to have a... a... Absolutely. I am happy to do that. Oh. There she is. Kristen and I are such dear sisters, and 
it's just nice to feel like we're having a dialogue for a moment, knowing that I would love to talk about I am mantra, but first I want to just speak to the, the privilege of being on the show, the high quality of sharings tonight. And when Scott and Kristen invited me to join and they said, they said, let's make sure that we have practices that people can really use to raise their frequency. Because it's one thing to know that I want to raise my frequency, but how do I do that on a daily basis? Because that's what we're really talking about, changing the collective consciousness, is if we change our individual consciousness, our vibration, which we can do every day. And Kristen, it's just nice to have you on screen because it feels like we're having a, our sister chat. Kristen and I are very close. And so I wanted to just share just a couple of things that I think sometimes I think if we understand in our mind why shifting our frequency is so important, it makes it more tangible every day to do it. Mm, yes. Does that make sense, Kristen? That makes complete sense. So let's talk about just some really simple findings and then how we can do it. Firstly, the HeartMath Institute. Again, if you're not aware of their work, pioneers in heart intelligence, heart coherence, brain coherence. By simply breathing in a regenerative emotion into a heart field once, twice, multiple times a day, we shift this whole energy of our heart field into a more coherent, harmonic state, which I won't go into right now, but this is significant. We shift from more erratic state to a more rolling hill harmony in our frequency. Then our heart sends that frequency up and bathes our brain in, in higher vibrational harmonic frequencies that allows us, again, this is scientifically proven, higher brain states, more intuition. We hear sound differently. We have greater problem solving and we naturally approach the world from a totally different space than when we're in survival mode. So one practice that we can do every day is pause. Pause. This can be done when we're feeling joyful. This can be done when we're feeling triggered or having a challenge. Pause and breathe a regenerative emotion in and out of your heart center for a few moments until you start to feel a shift in your frequency or your body. You And remember, these practices, like a neuroscience, like any new pattern, the more we do them, the more grounded they become in our system. And then just the other thing is Dr. Uh, David Hawkins, who is a scientist, researcher, he, he came up with the belief that our emotions carry different levels of frequency. He said our emotions are energy, that energy carries a vibration, and that vibration can be measured with a frequency. So every day we can consciously choose what emotional state are we cultivating to move from some of the more survival emotions into more regenerative emotions. Again, knowing that regenerative emotions like love, compassion, forgiveness, all directly assist the, the health of our physical body, our emotional health, the health of our mind, and they help us raise our frequency and expand our light, even to the point where we start putting out more light, which can be measured in photons of light, we literally start becoming more light to the world. Kristen, do you have any thoughts on that? Wow, I'm just feeling it. As it, It's amazing. As you're speaking it, I'm literally feeling it. Photons of light becoming that light. And I love that you said it's a choice how we cultivate Yes. Wait, I think I think you said I think that was your choice of words. Yes. It's a choice how we cultivate our frequency. And yes, maybe there's some days where we feel we're having trouble. Um, a lot of times we use the word control, but it's not control. It's how we cultivate and yeah. we can take little steps to tend the garden of our inner being. And I love yes. how you shared that. That really opened it up for me. Yes. And just finally, let's think about 
our body as a whole system. That's something that I work with my individual clients and with my group work, whole system wellness. It's, um, and so let's think about every day we can cultivate thoughts that have a higher frequency. Our thoughts are also like an electrical current. So we can cultivate more positive, loving, regenerative, compassionate thoughts. We can cultivate that on an emotional level. We can also cultivate that with a physical, with the choices that we make for our body. Also learning about nervous system regulation. If you're not understanding nervous system regulation, there's so much out there. It is highly assistive to help us get from fear and survival into the new paradigm of love and thriving. And as um, Mahalia said, and we've had so much um, beautiful sound tonight, we can also cultivate our energy through sound, through humming, through singing, through toning. I also utilize sound. Mahalia spoke about that beautifully. Heather and Donnie expressed that so well. And uh, Kristen, your sound, sound shamaness. And, and so I, I agree, sound is for everyone. What sound you is just for said, so we are sound beings. Sound is for everyone. Letting go of this idea of perfection can actually then give give us permission within ourselves to just start sounding and like Casey was saying also movement movement is for everyone movement and just giving ourselves this yes yes let's sound let's hum let's move yes and just remembering Dr. Emoto who I'm sure everyone's most people on watching are familiar with the Japanese scientists yes just remember all of this, all of these, all of these things that we've known in ourselves to be true are now being really shown his work with the molecular structure of water by sending positive thoughts and emotions into water, how it shifts it into crystalline frequencies. So knowing that we are a large amount of water, our planet is a large amount of water, as we start cultivating these higher vibrational frequencies in ourselves, in our lives, how that actually does really assist on quite a significant level. Again, the change starts with us. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have challenges and finding ways to address those challenges and move through those, the fear moments, the contracted moments, the reactive moments, that's also part of raising our frequency. And I know I'm aware of my time, so I'm just gonna dovetail into um, my next offering on next Sunday, April 7th, I am Mantra Monthly. We're going to be talking about the shift from fear to love. We're going to be looking at really this shift on a physical, mental, emotional, sort of spiritual level from this contracted frequency of fear, survival, and how we can make that shift in our lives to a more loving, regenerative, whole system, harmonic, empowered more of that divine blueprint space in our daily lives so yeah oh it's gonna be so beautiful and i was just remembering also as you were speaking that last month's theme which was gratitude you made this suggestion that when we wake up first thing in the morning when you're still and i've been doing when i remember when you're still lying in the bed how can you just think of one thing that you're grateful for and how that immediately starts to lift your frequency yeah. And and now we're going to get to dive into love. And in my in my experience of love, I mean, we experience love as romantic love, as friendship love. But I feel that love is. How do I even say it in words? To me, love is like creation pouring through. Yeah. It is the the voice of divine or how or, uh, of creation, um, to me, there is nothing more pure and um, immediately transformational, transmutational than, than this frequency of love. And I know you, Nikita, and I know you're going to take us on quite a journey when we yes. dive into the subject of love or into yes, the frequency of love. Frequency of love. And just, I think, Kristen, thank you for bringing that up, the morning practice. Again, there's been talk about the morning practice just to add to that 
when we're coming out of our sleep state, delta and theta brain waves, again, our brain is such a miraculous thing. Our whole body is a divine blueprint of goodness, divine goodness. But when we're coming out of sleep, even before you open your eyes, we're still in very deep, sometimes um, brainwave states. Start imprinting what you want. Start focusing on what you want. Think about it like you're placing into your field thoughts, even with I'm grateful for this day. I'm open to possibilities. You'll know what's right, but start cultivating even that first moment. And then when you wake up your eyes before you reach your phone, just remember that's a prime moment to be creating and cultivating your energy and also creating your reality, that first morning moment. Beautiful. Thank you so much, sister. And let's take a look. Scott, could you bring up Nikita's website so that we can know where to go? <laughs> And it's really simple. It's IamMantra.com. And just scroll down a little bit and definitely register. Because when you do, then we read I Am Ready. Um, and this is completely created by Nikita. How long have you been doing this again, Nikita? I started I Am Mantra in 2009 um, on Twitter. And then the email began in 2018. So that's what's that? six years the email has been going up but it began in 2009 based on a practice I started in 1999. What an incredible dedication every day a new mantra sent out and beautiful memes and we're really looking forward to Sunday a week from tomorrow April 7th um, and again uh, it's best just people register there and then that's where get, they'll get the information about it correct? Yeah, if you go to the homepage of my website, there's the I Am Mantra Monthly, there's my Living Wisdom Coaching, there's a Gratitude Audio Meditation. Just scroll down, enjoy yourself, have a look around. I hope it's beneficial to you. And I know that uh, Kristen mentioned it before, but you're a wonderful coach. Anything else you'd like to add about how she's helped you, Kristen? Yes, I would. I was just, <laughs> you read my mind, Scott. I was going to say, when I was putting out my Rainshine album this past June, um, in advance, I, I tuned inside and I said, Kristen, you could use some extra support and guidance to really help plan this and keep in a focused, grounded, loving state. Because sometimes as we're birthing new projects, we can get in a stress state. And I, I decided, okay, let me give myself the ultimate gift. And I saw that Nikita, among her many coaching opportunities, offers coaching around if you have a project coming up and, and how to both ground into your being and stay focused around that project. And it was one of the best choices I've ever made in my life to... Um, to ask Nikita to help guide me. And I stayed on course and it, it was a joyful process and all of the, the details that are often challenging to keep track of as you're getting towards the end of a project actually felt more easeful and even fun. And just having a partner to dream into those spaces with was priceless. And just on an emotional level, Nikita, you've, you've really shown mm -hmm. me so many um, beautiful practices that I can implement in just very short periods of time mm -hmm. to move from a space of anxiety, mm -hmm. which I sometimes feel like I'll have little moments where I feel a buildup of anxiety. And just even, you know, this practice of alternate tapping, yeah. I implemented this a lot last summer when I was having stressful moments and it really helped me so much. But Nikita has incredible, um, vast wisdom around how to regulate our body and our emotions in a really um, short period of time. So thank yeah. you, sister. Thank you, I Chris. highly recommend anyone who wants to give themselves a gift of extra love, extra encouragement, empowerment, or around a project you're working on, uh, reach out to Nikita. Her one-on-ones are incredible. Well, there's a lot of comments that have come in. I'm only going to read a couple. Karen Olson wrote, Thank you, Angel Nikita, for showering us with high vibrational love and powerful light-filled guidance and peace. Thank you for making such a difference in my life with your uplifting coaching, helping with my life, and with my album release. 
This is some, someone different from Kristen. This is from Karen. Yes. Life-changing vibrational power, much love. Um, and Pam writes, um, I've been told that this entire planet is a love school and that it is our entire mission while we are here to learn to love ourselves mm -hmm. and all beings. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone we've seen tonight, and especially Nikita with your I Am Mantras, helps us to remember all of that. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Kristen. Bless everyone here tonight. Bless Love everyone. You, Nikita. Watching you Twinkles. <laughs> we are the solution. We are the change. We are the ones. And we will all go together again on Sunday, April 7th for <laughs> the monthly I Am Mantra. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Mm. Well, we're getting to the we're 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 coming to the the end. I don't want to say the end. We're coming to the culmination of this current cultivation. <laughs> <laughs> there is no end. There, the love will just continue. We're going to get to ripple this space out into our lives. And um, well, we do have just so people know, we do have beloved Norman who's going to lead a KES group healing for us. So that is going to happen. But I definitely want to send an opportunity for whatever she would like to conclude with. Yes. Well, I, I'm just taking my um, my cue of love from Nikita and I chose a fun piece that I feel just it's it's very singable and mantra like and it's just about raising our frequency together and uh, you can sing along or I the, the lyrics go love is the way the way is love and then I like to encourage in your own space to go is love is love is love and you'll get it the next verse is the heart is the gate the gates the heart and then just feel the heart the heart the heart the next verse is be in the truth and truth will be and you can sing will be will be will be you'll get it. <laughs> here Fantastic. we go enjoy the journey and just feel those cells dancing and feel those frequencies rising up and maybe you want to move here we go
Hey, love beings, let's all twinkle, beloved Christian, for an amazing song, oh, an amazing man. show, an amazing evening, and what an amazing life she is leading and supporting us with. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So much fun to dance together and just feel that love circulating. And Scott, thank you so much. You are such a beloved friend to us all such a dear dear brother <laughs> in this family you are our guide our you hold this space with so much love so thank you for once again um just welcoming us home thank you well i appreciate that and i have a big request of everyone i would like to ask everyone to go to kristen hoffman.com <clears throat> that's where all things online live and go in the upper right hand corner <coughs> excuse me where it says payment and membership and i want to invite you to all do something that i did a while back now i became a member of her sonic soul family and this is one of the greatest choices you know i get to meet so many amazing people with so many wonderful offerings and kristen's offering is at the top of my list um and it's easy, you can come in at $11.33 or $77 a month. Um, and then you get to come to her monthly gathering and you also get special, uh, special experiences and special gifts from Christian. And her so Sonic Soul family is wonderful. <clears throat> they meet once a month on a Sunday afternoon, three o'clock Pacific time, six o'clock Eastern. And it's, it's a really, really special thing. And, deal she is a musical artist and we need to support her we need to be her patron and by all of us joining then she knows she has a monthly however many remember uh, however many members there are she knows that she can count on that income and that's really important for an artist like Kristen um, so please let's all support Kristen Hoffman it's really important to me and thank you so much Scott and thank you to all of you and I welcome you every month this Sonic Soul family mm -hmm. gatherings have become such an important part of my life and and my I, I feel that we truly lift each other up and through the music and through our sharing and the theme each month I feel like we have grown I know I can speak for myself that mm -hmm. I learn from everyone there I learn from us all gathering around a theme and sharing through the vehicle of music and dialogue so please join us you're everyone is welcome and uh, infinite gratitude mm -hmm. i'm going to bring our presenters back up again and don't go away everybody because we've got norman who is going to do a wonderful uh, group healing for us in a moment but here are our presenters tonight okay. uh, nikita Keishi. is mermaid mahalia still with I us i think she I had to I think she's I think she's do dove into the oceans of, uh, of rest and sleep. <laughs> but thank you, Nikita, Keishi, Donnie, Heather and Kristen. Another beautiful evening of and each and every one of you are raising our vibration, raising our frequency in beautiful and wonderful ways. Thank you. Love you all so much. Love being. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Mahalo. Beautiful show. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs>
I'm going to pop the spotlight for a moment on Mark Danisovsky. Um, Mark is a wonderful global peace driver. He's been to both of our retreats. Mark, you've got something special going on tomorrow. Tell us about it. Yes, yes. I, I want to invite everybody uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Vision Center for Spiritual Living in San Diego. We're doing our Easter service with our choir. And um, for years, uh, Scott was doing uh, Sacred Sunday. So I didn't tell people about Vision, but if you want to participate and experience a cool uh, new thought church that started originally with Terry Cole Whitaker, and then it became uh, uh, Kathy Hearn's church. And I've been the musical director there for 17 years now. That's a long time. But anyway, so we have a choir singing tomorrow. We have an incredible choir director. Um, and we're doing a beautiful song by Faith Rivera called Rise. It's an amazing song. We have a band and uh, Reverend Patty Paris is a great inspirational speaker. And we do a lot of concerts a uh, year round too. So you can always tune in for concerts at a very, we, we have great tech. So throughout the, throughout the month, we have concerts that we broadcast. So I just wanted to let everybody know, if you don't have a place to go tomorrow and you want to check in for something that's cool and, and uh, positive, please join us. And I put Hi. the link in, in there. So what time, uh, I hope, yeah. And if and you, this if is what you it is, it's a vision CSL for Center for Spiritual Living, visioncsl.org. And then you go there and click live stream. And what time is it tomorrow morning? Uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight. So 1 p.m. Uh, on the East Coast. So uh, it, it's, it's a great organization. Like I said, I've been there for 17 years and I have a restless spirit, so you know that there's some grounding going on there, you know, and uh, you'll get to see what I do, too. Uh, I play the piano there, uh, but um, it's I think you'll enjoy it. And if you if you do tune in, just say, hey, I, I tuned in from the Global Peace Tribe, tribe and that way I'll know that you were there. So thanks. Beautiful. Thank you so hey, much. Show tonight. Love you so much. Um, and um our wild monk, Jerry Anderson, is letting people know that uh, he's opening up his private forest for a forest bathing experience. You can write to him at abbott at mysticmonasterysjb.com. Abbott at mysticmonasterysjb.com. And that's in Pennsylvania. So like thank fun. you again, Tristan. Another beautiful, beautiful evening. I love you so much. Love you, Scott. Thank you. Well, I'm in Ashland, Oregon for about 36 more hours, and then I'm heading back to the Bay Area, but I've been here for a few months with the Twin Ray. We had an amazing retreat, and one of my favorite Twin Ray, Twin Ray community members is the wonderful Norman Love. Um, in fact, I was with Norman today. He was helping us all move. We were loading a truck together. Um, and he is a wonderful, uh, very devotional, uh, very visionary. He's a brilliant man. Um, and I'm really grateful that he's with us, even though he's been all day working, Ubering people, driving long distances, loading trucks. He's now here with his KES, Christic Energy System, uh, healing gifts. Welcome, Norman, to the Awakening World. Thank you, Scott. How are you? I'm good. Really happy to see you. Really happy that you're with us. And I'm going to turn it over to you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's good to see some faces I recognize, like Diara, George Noble, Sylvia, my old meditation assistant. <laughs> um, okay. Let's start the KS session. You guys should be familiar by KS uh, by now, but KS is just the energetic system that uh, works at the energetic level, at the soul level. That's how it's different than everything else because uh, Earth experience is basically just coming in with no karma. You gain karma and then you're trying to release the karma. So the KS helps you release, unwind all that stuff rapidly because as we are entering the end times now, humanity has... Um, been able to have access to these gifts. It's earned the right from the creator to have these gifts, and these gifts are here to help expedite the uh, dissension process, clearing of karma. So the first thing we're going to do is let's create the group container, and you guys can do it with me. So let's create the group container. Um, just envision 
that you're sitting around a campfire and all of us are there, everyone listening, everyone that could listen to the Awakening Show for March 30th, 2024 is there. We're all magically in the fifth dimension, sitting at the same time. And as we sit in this campfire, we ground ourselves and it's become aligned vertically. And we breathe. The most important thing is to breathe. Most important part of our earth experience, we have to do it. it makes everything better. So as you become aligned, you forget about the horizontal now. All you're thinking about is vertical. You being in your heart and above and below. That's it, that column that goes straight down through you. And as that column above you is just from your higher self. And below you is the earth, the center core of the earth. And in the middle is you, your golden heart. See your golden heart with like a bright golden light. And that golden light goes down, down, down into the earth, down, down, down. Anything you imagine is real. I imagine nation. We're a nation of magicians. So if you see it, it's real. Connect now to the center core of the earth. Breathe up its goodness, grounding you. Makes your light in your heart even brighter. And as your heart bright, see your height, your heart light now go into the center of that campfire and see everyone's light now go into that campfire. And there's this big ball of light that expands from the center around the whole camp. And that is our container. As we see the container now, I'm gonna say a little prayer to magically connect us in this container and we could do this remote healing. Still of mind and clear of heart, I enter now into the cosmic portal of holding where the highest selves of all the beloveds watching the Awakening, Awakening Now show on March 30th, 2024 awaits. With an open heart, complete trust and surrender, and in the name of divine cosmic Christ, I ask now for the manifestation of the highest timeline reality for all the beloveds watching the show today to become realized of mind, body, and soul with gentle lessons and graceful process and increase this holding as much as the cosmic law, physical body, and the souls of all the beloveds watching shall allow. I choose now to live in the reality where the healing has already been accomplished, the fates have been altered, and our prayers answered through thine holy presence of love. While honoring the free will of all, I give my complete thanks and gratitude for all that has already occurred through your mighty presence and thine eternal light. I am free. The soul is free. All is free. Amen. As I connect now remotely to this group container, we now do final group healing prayer. I, Norman Love, call upon the Cosmic Christ Supreme Intelligence to support and facilitate this group KES3 holding session. I request on behalf of all the beloveds watching the Awakening Now show, on March for thir March 30th, 2024, uh, to become aligned for the duration of this session to the divine intelligence of the Christic energy system with grace and ease and with joy. I invite the cosmic Christ energy to connect with us now in the most appropriate way for all involved. May all that transpire in this microcosmic reflection of our group constellation support and uplift the ascension of the entire human collective and all sentient life. I also call forth assistance from the divine Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father presence to overlight this group container with pure unconditional love from the Most High. May all be known through this connection of pure love so that, so that group holding session anchors 
in us in the most beneficent way. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Thank you, and so it is. Prayers are very powerful. You ask and you shall receive. There's a saying, those that expect nothing will not be disappointed. So now as we become now connected and as a whole remotely, I'm going to envision you guys, the group container, and I'm going to sweep your energy with the Christic shield, starting at the foot. Sweep in the earth chakra, sweeping the base of your feet, up, 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 your knees, sweeping, circling, spinning, up, up, up to your base of your spine, root chakra, up, Second chakra, up, third chakra, spinning, clearing your field, your energetic field, layers of your field, up, 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 third chakra, up to your heart chakra, fourth chakra, sweeping, spinning, cleaning, up to your throat chakra, spinning, cleaning, cleaning, opening, up, up, up to your third eye chakra. Spinning, clearing, up now to your crown chakra. Spinning, opening, clearing. Opening the field, ready for your healing. As I envision this group container in front of me, now release the Christic energies to bathe you. The Christic energy is very intelligent. It knows where to go where you, each person in the container needs it at this time. Just sit back and relax as we bathe the group container, each individual in it, in this Christic light energy. Sweeping the body, clearing, remove all that needs to be removed at this time. Just imagine yourself being bathed in this light, crystal light. What do you see? How does it feel? Some of you are very sensitive to energy. The more you see it and feel it, the more real it becomes. Now, one of the things our subtle bodies has is these 10 soul line that goes through them from the top of our head down through our feet. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna sweep 10 times these soul lines. You just have to sit there, relax. Even now, if you want, you can lay down. It's up to you, whatever you wanna do. You're in the group container. Starting at the top of your head, you're going to send to all 10 lines in your body down to your feet, sweeping up through your feel. Back up, down to the top of your head, your arms, back up. That is one time. We're going to do this ten, nine more times, a total of ten. Down to your feet, up. Two. Down. Up and out to your feel. Down to your arms. Uh, that's three. Four. Sometimes these lines get blocked. We're clearing them. Just provide a clear. Bye. Clear a connection to your soul once these lines are clear. Six. Seven. Eight. Up. 
Eight, clearing the soul lines in your body and in your energetic layer. Nine, and we'll do one more just to be safe. In case I miscounted. Now for all the beloveds who experienced that soul cleaning, skeletal structure to bone, bone to cranium, spinal column to spinal nerves, muscular to ligaments, circulatory and lymphatic system to venous and arterial, heart to lung, breath to blood to brain barrier, organ and endocrine system recalibrate, immune system and blood chemistry upgrade, central nervous system to parasympathetic, to sympathetic to vagus nerve balance now. It gives your system a little energetic upgrade. Now, as many of you know, our bodies has uh, layers of the field, seven layers. You have the etheric layer, emotional, mental, astral, akashic, atomic layer, and celestial layer. What we're gonna do now for everyone in the group container, we're gonna work on these layers and clear them. So anything that's in, start with the etheric layer. Anything that's in these layers will be cleared, balanced. Clearing the etheric layer. All must be removed. All must be cleared. Tune into your etheric layer. This is just a etheric spiritual version of your physical body. It's not physical, it's non-physical. Just tune in, witness it clearing, healing. I always do my healings with no music. To me, the silence speaks so much and brings me into the more the now moment, allow me to be more mindful, more present, to tune in to whatever layer of the field that is being worked on. Listen to that silence. It's all about the feeling, what's going on in the etheric right now. That's just being cleared. You feel it lightening up. Do your ears start ringing? As my frequency raises, I usually hear ringing in my ears gets louder and louder. Clearing the etheric layer.
Now clear the emotional layer of the field. The layer of the field that impacts the emotions. Just tune into the emotional layer, just sit your intention and witness it clearing. Anything that doesn't serve you being removed, transmuted. You noticing anything in your emotional layer? You get calmer. Now move to the mental layer of the field, the mental body. The mind, a little different than the emotional body. Tune in to your mental layer of your field as we clear it. As you continue to breathe and notice your vertical column and your mental layer. Just clearing the mental layer of everyone in our group container. And every time you rewatch the show in this KES session, you could just get a clearing all over again. Notice any shifts in your mental layer of your field. How has things changed? Now move to the fourth layer of the field, the astral layer. Astral layer is where dreams are. When you go to the astral realm, so Sometimes, you know, pick up weird stuff from the astral realm. Just a clear the astral layer of your field. Fourth layer of your field. Tune into your astral layer. It's also connected to the heart. How does your heart feel? Notice, is it opening up slightly more? Becoming a little lighter? Everything in the astral layer is being cleared. All must be removed. All must be transmuted. And 
It all starts with energy. Before you see it in the physical, it existed in the energetics layers of your body. You keep the energetics layers clear. It won't move into physical. It just moves to physical to get your attention. As you finish up the fourth layer of the field, the astral layer, and notice what you notice. Now move to the fifth layer of the field, the Akashic layer, associated with the throat chakra, the fifth layer of the field. You might have an issue in your field from another incarnation, another past life and it'll show up in your Akashic layer of your field. So we're not clear in the Akashic layer of the field. Anything in there that doesn't serve us is being cleared, being removed at this time. Just notice what you notice, You're tuning in as you breathe. Clearing the Akashic layer of the field for everyone in the group container. We now move to the Atmic layer of the field, Atmic, associated with the uh, sixth chakra, the third eye chakra. The atmic layer of the field is more the oversoul level. So we're all trying to connect you. We're trying to connect. We call that enlightenment. It's when you connect to your higher version of your soul, your atmic layer, the oversoul level. There's some of us that may be present that do have a connection to that atmic and they do remember their past lives and all that. So that comes into play. Clearing everything. Just notice what you notice with that atmic layer being clear. I might tell you something. Everyone on here will notice something with each of the layers. You might say, hmm, the mental layer, you know, or something, or the emotional layer. And some, the atomic layer. Clearing, removing all that doesn't serve us at this time from the atomic layer of the field. Now moving to the seventh layer of the field, the celestial layer. Cecil layer is more like that God level of the field, connected to the unity consciousness with that um, God level, so to speak, celestial level. As we clear and remove anything on the seventh layer of the field, releasing all that doesn't serve us, all that prevents access to this layer of the field. Clearing, transmuting.
we regularly keep our layers of our field clear, it unifies the field, unifies the light body, and that helps our light body. And what we are gonna do now also is clear the chakras for everyone in the group container, starting with the root chakra. Clear. You sit, you could tune into the root chakra and notice what you notice. The more you take part in observing, witnessing, feeling stronger, the healing, the effects. Root chakra, red, bright red, glowing, clear. Releasing all that doesn't serve you at this time. You move to the second chakra. Right below our belly button. Everyone knows where that's at. Just feel into it. Notice your second chakra, the color orange. It is being cleared. Notice now the third chakra, yellow, as you see and feel it. Witness anything that happens that is being cleared at this time. Move now to the fourth chakra, color green in the heart. You clear the heart chakra.
the moon in the throat chakra, the light blue color moving into the throat chakra as we clear it. Remove anything that doesn't serve us at this time. Clearing anything in our throat chakra, preventing us from speaking our truth, which is what clogs up the throat chakra a lot. Moving on to the sixth chakra. Clearing a third eye area. People see different colors for that chakra, so envision the color you associate with the sixth chakra. Some see the dark blue of the lapis lazuli light. Some see a darker purple violet. Whichever one works for you. Just tune into the third eye chakra and see. Notice what is being cleared. Move. The third eye chakra is connected to the atomic layer of the field. And so the atomic layer is like their connection to the oversoul. And so if you have a, the fact if your third eye is open and it's easy for you to see things in your third eye, that shows you have a strong connection to your oversoul. Clearing the six chakra. As we move on now to the seven chakra, more of like a violet, lighter purple color. Tuning to the crown chakra, notice what you notice as we clear.
as we finish up that last chakra, just notice when we did the layers of the feel, just notice how you feel now compared to before we started the layers in the chakra. Do you notice any difference? The more you notice, the more of the effect you will actually be getting, perceiving. And now for everyone in the group container, we're gonna work on the level of consciousness. There's different levels of consciousness. And one of the lowest levels when you look at life is things are happening to me. Why did this happen? Why'd you do that to me? You know, that was messed up. When you look at life from that perspective, it's it's one of the lowest form of consciousness that you can look at it. There's a higher form where you can look at things and realize and recognize the truth that in this reality, life happens through you. You're participating in it. Somehow you created it. And your unconsciousness is just reflecting it to you so that you can see it and make adjustments. And when something happens and you look at it and train yourself to look at it from the layer of the field where you say, you take ownership for it and you say, this is not happening to me, it's happening through me. How did I create this? How did I participate? Use your imagination. And so what we're doing now for everyone in the field, we're raising the consciousness, the ability to see from the higher perspective at all times that things happen through me. You can only change that which you own, which you control. And if you look at life as I have no control, something's just happening to me, how could you change it? Just imagine if you realize that you're playing a part, you're not empowered, it's not in your control. Let's see, why did this happen? Oh, that's how I created it. And the more you look for it, the more you'll see it. And so we're raising that ability for the group to see how life happens through them. A little reminder. Because of this, from now on, as something happens, you won't just be focusing horizontally on the person or the thing that happened. You'll stay vertical on yourself and say, hmm, how did I create this? And this little clearing will help you perceive from that level of consciousness a little bit more easier. Raising the consciousness, the level of awareness, everyone in the container, the level where they can see, perceive, and check in when things happen. See what part they play. How it, this is just a reflection. There's an old saying, you cannot perceive what you're not the vibration of. It's literally the law of vibrational harmonics. So if you see it, experience it, you must be of that vibration. Somewhere, somehow.
You'll notice anything has shifted in your awareness a little bit. Now we're going to move on. Let's be checking with our little group container and see ourselves sitting around our little fire, all our golden heart lights in the middle, glowing and encompassing us. We're going to call in some ascended planets and their rays and their swords to do some clearing. As you come into the human experience, you pick up little conditioning and this will help us let go and clear those little conditioning. So just notice yourself. You take a deep breath and you settle back into your heart where it all starts. And you're in your vertical column, straight up and down. Take that light in your golden light in your heart and see it now, just shoot a beam down, down, down into the earth. Again, grounding you to the earth, the crystal core of the earth. And as it hits the crystal core of the earth, it comes back up and shoots up to your heart. And then now shoot it down to your root chakra to connect to your body. See it grow red, the root chakra grow very red. And from this connection to your body, shoot now that energy from the root chakra up, up, up through your column, up past the heart, up through the top of the crown of the head, up out into the sky, go up, up, up into space, and set your intention to connect to the sun and the moon. See the sun and the moon with this white diamond light. We're connected to the ascended version of the sun, the ascended version of the moon. As you see them now, see them in this diamond white light. And we ask them for the energies to provide the energies to clear these little deviations in our, our consciousness. And it sends the energies down, down, down from space, down, down into your body through the core of your um, crown chakra, back into your heart. It's white diamond light. As this di diamond light from the sun and the moon come down into your body through your crown chakra, it fills your heart. As it fills your heart, it's spinning clockwise down. As it spirals down, it spins out into your field, the field that we just cleared. See your field, energetic field, get filled with this white diamond light. This white diamond light. Now see it go from your heart into our little group container, in flow into the middle. See everyone's diamond light energies from the ascended planet, uh, sun and moon go into the center and it just beams out continuously, explodes this light, just see go poof. As it goes from the center that we're all sitting around this little uh, white diamond light now, see the white light pulse out and as it goes out it goes through your body and you feel it and it goes through your back and it continues and then it pulses again white diamond light if you can it's important to see it and feel it and now our entire container which was gold is now white diamond light continuously pulsing Oof. See and feel the continuing pulses as this white diamond light from the ascended sun and moon pulses through your body, pulses to your physical body, pulses to your etheric body, your subtle bodies, clearing everything that needs to be clear at this time. 
anything that is not of your soul, your beautiful, pure, divine light is being cleared right now and released. Just continuously see and feel nothing but light, white light. The entire room is now this white diamond, brilliant light continuously pulsing from the center out. Feel it. As a pulse in the center hits your body, every cell is nourished and bathed in this diamond white light. As it pulses, you could feel the energy get stronger and stronger. It hits your heart, and you definitely feel it in your heart. This white diamond light clearing. All that needs to be removed at this time. All that prevents you from being just divine light consciousness. All variations are released. All must be removed now. As we turn it up, we see this light get even brighter, diamond white light from ascended sun and ascended moon. In the middle of the circle, it comes and just hits your body as it goes through you, washing you, clearing, cleaning, removing all that doesn't serve you at this time. How does it feel with each pulse? Feel as it goes to your brain, goes to your bones, your nervous system, every cell of your body being washed in this brilliant white diamond white light over and over again, hitting every chakra. Focus on any area you want right now and, and just feel it as this white light directs from the center of our container. Hits your knees, hits your bone, your eyes. And as it passes through you, it cleanses and releases anything that needs to be removed at this time. Leaving you with just divine light. Feel it hit the throat chakra. Loosens up that throat chakra, this white light just bursts from the center, hitting you each time, pulsating. The more you feel, the more you experience it, the more it's actually cleansing your system. The subtle layers of physical bodies being just whitewashed, purified. Notice how it you feel it in your knees as the light expands in a concentric circle from the center out, bursting, hitting the heart. How does it feel in the heart? Over and over, pulsing. And as it dies down, you just settle and breathe and notice the little energetic sheen around our cells that was left. And we sit and breathe. And we thank the ascended sun and ascended moon for providing the energies for this clearing. Now calling to do one more, one more purification clearing. As we breathe, we go back into your heart where it all starts.
and drop back into the root chakra again. Connect with the body. Root chakra is the physical body. You see it shining bright red. And as it shine bright red, we see it burst up your spine, up your vertical column, up through the top of your crown, up. And set your intention to connect now to the ascended planet of Mars. When you connect to the ascended planet of Mars, we ask it for the energies to provide the energies to clear all variations from its with its ruby red ray. The ascended planet of Mars now will see it send down the energies down, 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 red to the top of your crown, enters your body, down into your heart. See this energy spiraling down clockwise around your body, down through the crown, into your heart. And as it fills your heart with this ruby red light, it spins clockwise and it spins out to your feel. And it fills your feel with this ruby red light. And as your feel gets filled to capacity with the ruby red pouring down from ascended Mars, See yourself now around the container and send this energy into the center of the container and see it enter and puff out, making everything now red. Everything is now ruby red. Your ruby red. Everyone in the container is ruby red. The room you're in is ruby red. And see these concentric, concentric pulses pulse from the center out. Boom. And as it goes out, it rips through your body, goes through your front of your body, out through your back, cleansing, removing all that needs to be removed at this time. Clearing, hitting your cells, feel it as it goes through your bones, pulsing over and over from the center out, this constant poof. Pulsing of the red energies from ascended Mars. You didn't think you'd experience that today, did you? But here we are. That ruby red energy pulsating through your body, hitting now your heart chakra. Notice what it does to the heart chakra every pulse. Notice what these pulses do to your cells of your body, clearing it down to the DNA level, clearing as it moves through your body to the subtle fields of your body, clearing the etheric layer, clearing any variations in the mental layer, clearing any variations in the astral layer. It knows exactly what you need. See and feel each pulse, ruby red light ray pulsing out from the center of our fire out to the groups as it rips through you, clearing any variations, making way just for the divine light consciousness. As we ramp up the energy, Feel the pulses intensify in the center of our fire, our group container, ruby red pulsing from inside out, like one second. Oof. Clearing all that needs to be cleared from you at this time. With such energetic clearings today, how could any physical ailment still exist? We worked on the chakras, we worked on the layers of the feel, make up our light body. We upgraded our consciousness, we upgraded the systems of the body. We cleanse the 10 soul lines of the body. As we do one burst now, see that energy hit the 10 soul lines we just cleared red ripping through it clearing and removing taking with it all that doesn't serve us at this time 
Notice how that feels. Notice this energy, what it's doing to you. The fact that you notice it and you feel it shows you that it's working, actually doing something. Remember, you cannot perceive what you're not the vibration of. So as we see this red light pulsing, clearing, clearing our arms, clearing our knees, clearing the bones, we feel it ripping through our blood, the brain, nervous system, wherever you wanted to send it, just bring your attention to it and notice it. The pulse is happening. You just got to notice focusing on that part of your body. Notice how it's different than the diamond white light, how it replaced it. As we breathe and just become mindful of what it's doing in our body, how differently our bodies feel, the heart feel. For me, the heart is opened up more. And as we just notice now, we thank Ascended Mars for providing the energy with the ru ruby red ray to clear any variations in your body. Now to the container, I just do a final sending of Christic light that would energize you, sending it to the hearts of everyone. As this light will energize and go from your heart to anywhere in your body that is needed at this time. It's very intelligent. If you need it in your eyes, it'll go to your eyes. If you need it in your kidneys, it'll go to your kidneys just energizing your cell. Those illnesses just come from the energies in the cells and the body just not being optimal. It's one of the reasons the EES system works so well. It just provides energy to your cell. And now, as we open up your field, as we opened your field in the beginning so you can receive this energies. You now close down all your chakras, sweeping the field close as we go along, removing anything that needs to be removed. Third eye, your throat chakra, thinning, clearing, sealing. Heart chakra spinning down as we come down from the head, breathe deep. Sealing off all the energetic centers that we opened up. Sealing off all the chakras. We don't want to leave you open. Closing your soul star, closing your earth star. We're not complete. Thank you for participating in this. Just notice how you feel and that'll tell you everything. Oh, Norman, that was amazing. I have a question for you. You mentioned several times the ascended planet of Mars. Now, we've heard that Mars used to be alive and then something happened, maybe an atomic war at night. So tell us what you know or what, what the perception is about the ascended planet of Mars. That really intrigued me. Well, this energy 
healing system comes from the twin ray. And the twin ray's mission, um, from my point of view, is just to help ascend us, help ascend this planet, go into the golden age. So a lot of the stuff that they deal with, the energetic system deal with, is the extended version of things. We're no longer playing in the you know descended version of things. So we calling um, for this particular KES3 um, healing, we use the ascended energies of the planets and the rays uh, to do it. So that's why we say the ascended version. Yeah, because we're trying to have, help everyone ascend. So a lot of times you see that theme in the, the crystal energy system. We deal with that fifth, because that's where we're going. That's we're trying to get everyone. Right, beautiful. A lot of comments coming in, and amazing. We still have 32 people with us. This is about half, a little bit more than half of our people. Uh, Dana writes, thank you so much, Norman. So cool how you described and explained everything that was being done. It really helped me to connect to it more. And I want to say I really enjoyed that too, Norman. Uh, it was really valuable. Mark Janisowski made a similar comment. Um, our beloved DR says, deep, deep, powerful, and gentle. And... Norman, are you available for people to get um, individual private KES healing from you? Yes. Um, well, what's the best way to contact you? My email is weird, but I don't want to change it. I'm a Steel Pulse fan. Bob Molly's favorite band was Steel Pulse. So my email is steelpulsefan at gmail.com. S T E E L P U L S E F A N. That's correct. See you email at meal. So if you reach out to me, you know, we can schedule. And my website is actually where you could do, um, you could actually sign up for KES session is norman-love.com. Norman-love.com. And you'll see under somewhere something about scheduling a KES uh, session. There's also little tools I have up there for sharings. There's one where you could do like a numerology that helps you find your number in life and stuff like that. And I have a couple of little tools because I'm like a coder, so I play with stuff on there. So yes, you can go there and do a session or you could write me. I'm putting together a little um, monthly group healing. Just like we just did here was a group healing. So the monthly group healing is just going to be like um, a KES session is like uh, uh, $111. But with a group healing, you know, it could be cheaper because I could still make my $111, but each person doing it just pays like $22. And you just do it once a month. So this way you can continually do what we just did here, continually work on the layers of the field, the soul stuff, upgrade the stuff of the body, and then bring in some ascended stuff. And there's some other uh, techniques, uh, tools I didn't use um, that we would use. So if anyone wants to join that, uh, our monthly stuff, they could just write me to that too, and I'll add you. Beautiful. Norman, thank you. That was beautiful. So again, you can contact him at uh, website norman-love.com or email stillpulsefan at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Norman. I'm really appreciating your beautiful... Thank you, Scott. Oh. I just want to say Scott is so amazing. I love Scott. Um, he taught us down here the compassionate uh, class, nonviolent communication. And at first I was like, man, but it is so amazing. If you have not taken nonviolent communication class with Scott, I learned so much. There's so much to this thing when you interact with humans that there's so much to learn, you know, stuff about memory. <laughs> like you literally even remember stuff differently and, and stuff like that. So there's so much nuggets in it and um, it changed my life. And I told him this uh, from the heart. And yeah, Scott is amazing. Oh, thank you, Norman. That means a lot to me. Um, you are too. And how blessed we all are. What an amazing global tribe. I'm going to go to Gallery View one last time. We can all twinkle Norman. Thank you, everybody, for who's still here. Look at all these wonderful friends that are still with us. Um, so thank you, everybody, for being with us tonight. Remember, on Wednesday night, we're going to have a wonderful show, including Raquel Spring, our favorite astrologer, explaining to us about the power of this upcoming eclipse. And also, as Norman talked about nonviolent communication, we're going to hear from Lori Grace teaching embodied compassionate communication. Let's all meet at Mark Tanisovsky's wonderful event tomorrow, 10 a.m. Um, I will be, the beloveds, are, the Twin Ray are having a 
uh, Easter ceremony, so we're going to go up to the sanctuary for that. And I don't think I'll be back to my computer by 10 a.m. But I want to encourage everybody else to go to Mark's wonderful event. Um, and thank you again, Norman. Thank you, Diara, for all your support today. God's blessings, everyone, and I'll see you on Wednesday night. Blessings.